Um, so, so when Arthur um, asked us to speak, uh, he sent out a bunch of questions, and, and I didn't go through PowerPoints because I don't think uh, I can impress you and get you all to run out and buy water meters and install them in your basement tonight. So, um, so I'm just going to talk about the things that he wanted us to talk about, which is culture, um, innovation, and continuous improvement, um, kind of how we learn from mistakes and, and what our views are on, uh, on automation. So the first thing for me, um, is Badger Meter's been here for 114 years and I'm just the sixth CEO. So, been here now for almost two years this month. And one of the things that I found at Badger Meter is a fantastic culture. We have long tenured employees that, that like most of us do in Milwaukee, that hardworking, loyal, do a great job. And at the same time though, even though we've been here this long, we have a tremendous culture of innovation. So over the years, we've gone from mechanical metering to electronic metering. Uh, we were the first company to put a radio on a meter so, so meter readers could stop coming into your basements and uh, be able to send you a bill from, uh, from radio technologies. So, so what I've tried to do coming here is find any way that I can be additive to that culture. Uh, I didn't need to change it. My, my first priority was to preserve it. Uh, so, so with that, um, I always like to think about learning from mistakes. Very early in our careers, we're told to, to learn from our mistakes. Um, I try to learn from other people's mistakes uh, rather than my own. So fortunately, I've had the opportunity to work for several other CEOs of companies, and I've tried to learn and adapt to what works really well and try to avoid the things that haven't. So, so for me, the culture is uh, the most important thing. If you have a great one, you have to preserve it. And if you don't have a great one, uh, you've got to build it. Second on innovation and continuous improvement. Um, I, I'm a zealot. I started out in operations and supply chain. And the first thing that I start from is the idea that um, every day I can do things better and I can look inward to try to make sure that what am I doing today that's going to make Badger Meter a better company than it was yesterday. Um, very metric driven, uh, so I like to monitor and make sure that things are on track. But for the most part, what I try to do to, to make sure that we drive innovation is I make myself available to our employees. Uh, I've tried to really uh, improve our communication methods. We're very open with metrics, how the company's performing, making sure people know what they can do to, uh, to help us improve. But at the same time, uh, every month, one of the most effective things that I do is uh, I have a meeting with usually about 10 to 12 people, and we just sit down, talk about the business, talk about the things that we're doing well, so I, so I continue to reinforce what we do well, and then talk about the thing, excuse me, and then talk about the things that, that we uh, could be doing better. And I've learned a tremendous amount from those small group meetings. Uh, it's, it's much more effective for me because people tend not to ask questions in large meetings. Uh, so just that, that personal connection, uh, I think, has helped me learn and evolve as a leader and, and really try to help improve the business. Uh, so, so learning from mistakes, I, I try to tell our, our especially our, our facility leaders when I go around and visit our, our plants that, you know, when we have dashboards, if, if everything on the dashboard is green, we're probably either not measuring the right things or we're lying to ourselves about our performance. Uh, so, so we try to be honest about um, having stretch goals, making sure that we understand how we're doing, making sure that we understand root cause, corrective actions, monitor that things are, are on the right track. And, and um, I'm very open to having red on a dashboard, and I think that's um, oftentimes a failure in leadership is always looking for just the greens. And then, and then on the automation front, one of the things that, that we have at Badger Meter uh, that's such a blessing is having this great long tenured workforce, but it's also gonna be a tremendous challenge. Um, like most companies here or across the country, uh, 25 to 30% of the workforce is over 55, and a large part of that is over 65. And then you think about the other changing demographics of younger people getting married later, having fewer kids, having them later. Um, I think as we get into automation, I think we, I think we need to you know, pump the brakes a little bit. I think, I think humans and robots are gonna be able to live together in harmony. 
Uh, there's going to be enough room that we can automate. There's going to be enough room for smart people to train those machines and still do work that's extremely valuable for a long time. So uh, I'm not as scared about the, uh, uh, the robot invasion. Uh, I, think, I think we're going to be just fine. Um, so, so overall, um, I'm just extremely thrilled and proud to be uh, leading a company like Badger Meter. Uh, we've got a great future and um, looking forward to uh, running it for the next 20 years and being, you know, handing this off to the seventh CEO after 135. So with that, thanks.